Well, you know what good economic news means for Joe Biden. This is really a problem. Might the economy be doing too well? I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, new GDP numbers released this morning. United States GDP third quarter grew at a 4.9 percent annual pace, better than expected, the fastest growth rate in nearly two years. Gross. This is CNBC GDP, a measure of all goods and services produced in the US, rose at a 4.9 percent annualized pace in Q3 ahead of the 4.7 percent estimate. The sharp increase came because of contributions from consumer spending, increased inventories, exports, residential investment and government spending. Um, this is if you look at uh, historical numbers in Q2, it was 2.1 percent in Q1. It was 2.2. The end of last year, 2.6 and 2.7. Of course, we had those GDP declines in the first half of 2022 and then uh, also very strong numbers uh, in most of 2021. Now, you would think this is good news. Are there ways in which GDP growth can be, quote, bad. Well, it depends on what you mean by bad. We're going to do a deep dive on this in a moment. But you have to see the video from Fox News and uh, Maria Bartiromo this morning bringing in anyone she can to try to explain why this is all bad. You will see and hear the Fox hosts first shocked by this really good number. And then you will hear the real. I, I just love it when they go this way. This could, could employment be too un, could unemployment be too low? Could the economy be too good? They actually pull this out, but I'm going to pretend that they're serious people and we're going to analyze it. But let's listen. This is so funny. Right, the, the GDP is out. I want to get right now to Jerry Willis and get that breaking news. Jerry. Yeah, Maria, that's right. We've got GDP at 4.9 percent. That is the first street on third quarter GDP. That is a uh -oh. surprise on the upside. We had been expecting consensus was 4.3 percent. You can see that's a big positive number. The Dow continues in negative territory ahead of the open here. Look at this. 4.9 percent is well over twice second quarter GDP, which was 2.1 percent. First quarter GP, GDP, 2 percent. So you can see some really strong expansion here, mostly due to consumers, as you've been talking about right now. Retail sales, of course, have been uh, strong looking in the rear view mirror. Uh -oh. There was one stronger forecast out there. The Atlanta Fed, their GDP now forecast was 5.4 percent for the quarter. This quarter, of course, July to September, GDP the broadest read on economic growth. But wow, what a stunner actual coming in at 4.9 percent. Maria. All right, Jerry, thanks very much. Markets are actually off of the lows or down a 109 on the Dow Industrials, down 104 on the Nasdaq. And I am talking with Keith Banks this morning. And Keith, you know, when you yeah, let's see what Keith has to say about this. See a number like this. I know you said you're probably going to see the Fed take another pause next week. But does this, you think, have enough juice? to actually move the Fed's thinking for the following meeting. That's the December meeting. It, it could well. I mean, it depends on, I mean, this is backward looking, right? Yeah. So number one, they're going to say that's interesting. And it is a big number. As Jerry said, wow, 4.9%. Uh, but I think they'll look and say, what are the indicators as they look into the fourth quarter and beyond? But at some point, we need to see a cooling off of the economy. Uh, oh. And we need to see in our view, a, a slackening in the labor markets. It's hard mm. to believe we can start the next cycle with in, with unemployment below 4% and not have. It's too low. The economy's too hot. Unemployment's too low. To worry that very quickly, you're going to start to see wages reflective of that if, if, if activity begins to pick up sustainably. So this is all great to see. But at some point, we do need to see additional cooling. Yeah, the, the economy can't remain this good for this long. Now, these are not serious people. Let's have a serious discussion about this. This is not a partisan discussion. This is just what it is. First, I know some people here. OK, good GDP number doesn't seem to affect me. I'm still in my same job. I'm still earning the same amount of money. Why is this good for me? Even if you as an individual don't immediately feel the impact of GDP growth, there are a number of different ripple effects when you see GDP growth numbers. In general, there are more job opportunities that come up as GDP goes up. Uh, you see uh, companies open up and, and look to do more hiring. This both gives opportunities for uh, uh, movement from one company to another, potentially with higher wages. And also in general, it can put upward pressure on wages 
as employees start to have uh, more options, improved public services. If if we are investing the economic growth in improve, improving public services, I mean, this is sort of like where the money comes from. It comes from as a country uh, growing GDP that increases the tax base and then you can do stuff with that money. So if it's if it's done in the right way by responsible governments, GDP growth is then used to improve quality of life and overall well-being of the population. So it is something that is desirable uh, when businesses grow, which is what GDP growth means. They often require more employees or make more investments in companies who themselves have employees. So there's this economic multiplier effect. It's like super, super basic stuff. And then you've got the tax collection part. You increase the tax base when GDP is up. Now, what about the ways that this could and, and by the way, GDP growth tends to reduce poverty levels and there's all these sort of obvious benefits to why uh, when we look at an economy using the standard approach, a growth approach, which is, you know, there are limits to that approach, which I concede and I've talked about, but that's why we would consider it to be good and why it's good for there to be low unemployment, because it means there are fewer people that are out there unable to participate meaningfully in life in the economy because they don't have a job, et cetera. Now, is it possible that too much growth too quickly and unemployment being to quote too low for too long. Can there be negative aspects to it? Of course there can. But in general, too much of anything is potentially bad. Uh, the demand that is generated by GDP growth can cause inflation. And then the inflation can get out of control and go beyond the wage growth and GDP growth. It can cause an inflationary spiral to have sustained periods of high GDP growth. Um, you can get a situation where you get an asset bubble like in stocks or in real estate and then bubbles can pop right now. I mean, real estate prices seem to be down or at least flat, so it doesn't seem to be happening right now. But you can get those bubbles as a result of sustained high GDP growth. Businesses might overextend themselves thinking things are going to be this good indefinitely. And of course, nothing is forever in, in our economy. And they end up overextended, either taking on too much debt or expanding too quickly or whatever the case may be. Um, you can see the GD, the benefits of the GDP growth go disproportionately to the very rich. That often happens in the United States. Uh, so that could be you. That's not Fox's concern, by the way, but that is something that can happen. And so what you do in that case is you raise interest rates in order to cool the economy. The problem is Fox has often been critical of the policy of the Fed in raising interest rates. So they want to have it every single way. And ha they, they want to have all of their cakes and eat them, too. They also want to say if GDP goes down, that's bad. And if GDP goes up, that's bad. And if unemployment is low, that's bad because of this reason. And if the Fed is cutting interest rates or raising interest rates, it no matter what, it's bad is the point. So bottom line, GDP growth and low unemployment are signs of a strong economy in general. If it gets to an overheated situation, they can generate future instability, which, by the way, is an inherent part of the type of economy that we have. Fox is not going to be the place to seriously analyze this stuff as they prove once again. They just want to do partisan attacks on Joe Biden no matter what. If Biden's the president, then the numbers must be bad, at least in some way. If you're familiar with me and my show, you know that I don't promote crazy supplements, drinkable silver, wacky stuff that right wing shows do. I don't offer miracle cures or anything like that. I promote products that are backed by science and that make sense at the end of the day. That's what our sponsor AG one is. It's really simple. Instead of taking dozens of different vitamins, potentially spending hundreds of dollars on them, what I do is before my morning cappuccino, I have a scoop of AG one in water. Simple. I get the entire day's worth of vitamins, minerals, prebiotics, probiotics. It's in a form that you can absorb and utilize. It tastes good. You can put it in a drink. You can put it in a shake, whatever works for you. Unlike routines that involve all sorts of pills and gummies and the inconvenience and the difficulty of maintaining it, AG one is just foundational nutrition made easy and affordable. I've even gotten some friends and family hooked on AG one because it's just simple. It's simple and more cost effective. Go to drink AG one dot com slash Pacman. You'll get five free travel packs of AG one and a year's supply of vitamin D for free. 
The link is down below.